Greetings all, Shard Beaks in here. I'm a little cold, so that's why this hat. Um, I know, being a mohawk in the winter is probably not good, but I'm going to fix this. I, I'm thinking I'm going to trim off about this much more of it. Apparently my head's not straight, because <laughs> my mask, which looks good with long hair, not looking well with my mohawk. But yeah, I'm going to trim this up a little bit more, because when I go to, I want to be able to do that. And it, I don't know, I might shave it all off. Who knows? We'll see. But right now, I'm kind of cold. So, all right. So, this is vlog 179. This is No Die Self. And um, I'm a great lover of sci fi. I started reading sci fi fiction probably, well, comic books itself is kind of a sci fi thing. They're kind of a mixture of science, science, science fiction and fantasy. So, of course, I started reading that when I was, you know, five, six years old. But um, I, I remember Star Trek, watching Star Trek. Uh, I remember um, just bits and pieces of things. But books were always a big deal. This is not a book one, though. This is a movie. And it's a sci-fi movie. Um, no, it's not a movie. It's a TV series, sorry. Which was also a movie. So... <laughs> I kind of doing the today. Um, it's Stargate. Um, I remember Stargate the movie. I went to the theater and saw it because I was a big Kurt Russell fan, and I really love it. Um, it's kind of interesting that the same guy who wrote Stargate also wrote um, Universal Soldier, which is another one that I really like too. Um, and Independence Day. <laughs> kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, so I really like Kurt Russell. He was one of my favorite actors in that time period. And so, um, because of, of course, Escape from New York and, and, um, Snake Plixen. Escape from New York. The other one. Oh, John Carpenter's, which it didn't have Snake Plixen in it, but it had the same kind of, like, Good looking hero kind of guy, right? The um the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. My brain's not working well today. So if there's like weird gaps in the in the talking, <laughs> it's because of that. Fibro does that to me sometimes. Uh you couple that with my bipolar and things get all messy in my head. Anyway, um so you know, 1994 Stargate the movie came out. Now, I know this isn't the movie one, and the reason I'm talking about the movie is because it has such a big influence to the TV series that, um, you know, it's that I have to include it. So, I'm in, I, I, am, I am centering on the TV series, but including the film will not take the film up in the film section of Know Thyself either. So this is it. You get it here. So anyway, I really liked it. I liked the synopsis. But the Gates reminded me of a book I had written by C.J. Cherian, which was the Morgane series, in which they had these huge gates that they went through that teleported them through time and space. Um... For me, it was a big connection. I don't know if other people would know it, but it was for me because I really loved that book. And especially Exile's Gate, which was the last of the series. Like, it pulled all the other books in the series together. If you get a chance, read it. See if you think there's a connection. If you like Stargate, and you've, you know you know Stargate and you've seen it. Anyway, so then, because I love the movie a lot, I own it. You know, when you could start buying movies, I... I bought that one. Um, the TV series came out. Now, I'm not sure. The TV series came out in 1997. And at that time, I had that was the year that I moved to from Sacramento, California to Redding, California. So um, I was probably watching it on Sci-Fi Channel because that's where it came out on first was the Sci-Fi Channel. There was, there was quite a few shows that I watched on Sci-Fi that I only... You could only watch them on sci-fi, and that's where I watched them, and Stargate was one of them. Uh, Stargate Atlantis also came out, which I, that that came out, and then a couple of years later, I went back and I bought the DVD set. I have the, huge, the whole set of the DVD set of Stargate 
Alanis. I like Alanis differently than I like Stargate SG-1. So in Stargate SG-1, the, the, I like the play between the O'Neill character and the other characters. Um, I found that to be very entertaining. Uh, it's interesting because I had never watched MacGyver, really. I remember it coming out, but I wasn't, I didn't have cable and I didn't have TV for a long time off and on. It was just not something I could afford, um, being a single parent with uh, very little choices. That's why I didn't, there's a lot of years that I didn't play video games because I didn't have either a PC and or didn't have the money to buy a new console. Um, a lot of my time, if I was, I was working and going to school, was outside, doing lots of hiking, camping, that kind of stuff, going to the lake, going to the beach, that kind of stuff, or reading. I did a lot of reading <laughs> and a writing. When I became homeless, I did a lot of writing. That's how I entertained myself. You know, it's like, how's writing entertaining yourself? Well, because you're creating a story and you get involved in those sto those characters and then you get to, it's like role playing, you get to, you get to pull them out. And then in 2004, right after my, well, I want to say a couple years after that. It, I think it was 2006, I joined a guild. And so uh, that's where a lot of my time went too. I didn't really play video games at that point in time. And I didn't really do a whole lot of stuff. We didn't get, I lost my PlayStation 2. Didn't buy a PlayStation 3 at the time because I didn't have the money. I got a GameCube, I think, instead. I think we did Nintendo stuff. And then um, from there, I didn't have video games for a while. And then I picked one up in 2000 and... 11, got an Xbox, uh, still didn't have PlayStation for a long time, um, in fact, I did, the next time I had a PlayStation was right when I moved to, it was 2017, so, you know, video games weren't, video games weren't a, a big component, I'm not a hard die core video game because of the fact that, you know, at the time, money was going out to other things, um, the same thing for cable. So I had DVD sets. First I had VH sets, and then I had DVD sets. But then I got DVD sets. So um, when I got pregnant with my son, I started watching a lot of DVDs. And then um, that was where my entertainment went, was watching DVDs. <laughs> and Stargate was one of those. I had watched Stargate up until I lost Abel. Um, so, but I have... I have up to like eight season eight in dvd i'm missing um nine ten maybe it's eight nine ten i'm missing i don't know i'm missing where uh the last two seasons where ben bauer is in it now i like ben bauer because of farscape which we'll talk about another time but um what we like and what we don't like and the things we enjoy and the things we become fans of is based on how it makes us feel, the things that are important to us. For me, sci-fi and fantasy was so much better than regular, just regular fiction. Though now you have such so many genres that you know you can't just say one genre or another. An example of that was that I thought Cyberpunk 2077 was based on the idea of Cyberpunk by William Gibson who wrote a book called Mona and Lisa Overdrive in 1983. He He's kind of considered the father of cyberpunk. One of them, anyway. I'm sure there's a couple others of them out there. Um, but then my son informed me that, no, it's a board game, <laughs> a role-playing board game. And there's quite a few of them. And I was like, well, I'm so clueless sometimes. And I am. I am really, really clueless about a lot of stuff. Because there's so much stuff out there. Um, I like Stargate, but I'm not like, I'm not like an, a fan of, I could tell you every single bit about it. Um, I like some of the, the episodes I like are more centered on the characters than the actual overall Stargate universe style stuff. So I watched SG-1 and then there, then Stargate Atlantis, Atlantis. Uh, Universe came out during the period of time I didn't have cable, so when I went back to watch it, I didn't really like it. I mean, it still has 
it's darker, I think, than Stargate 1 was. It has, I mean, Stargate 1, SG-1 has a lot of dark themes in it when they're dealing with the aliens, but the characters do a lot of fun stuff that are just kind of interesting, you know, one-shot episodes that are kind of cute, and I like those. Um, but, and Atlantis was kind of the same way. It had that, you know, adventure, Star trek -y adventure, Battlestar Galactic kind of feel to it. And you, and they went on adventures on different planets, solving different, you know, things of the overall arc story. But, um, the characters were interesting too. And of course, Jason Momoa is on there. And I, yeah, I'm a big fan of Jason Momoa. I watch a lot of his stuff. Even when it's not the sci-fi stuff, there's a lot of, um, like Red Road, I think, is one of them. There's a lot of other stuff I watch, drama stuff that he does, that I find really interesting. Um, I, I prefer him as the action, an action character, but that's not like, I won't, I won't not watch him because he's not an action character. You know, if it's a good movie, I'll watch it. That's pretty much it. If it's a good movie, and it's got somebody I like in it, or it's a good TV series, and I got somebody in it that I like, then I'll watch it. Um, I always was interested in, I always write sci-fi and fantasy. I'm very interested in the idea of human beings going to space. I'm very interested in wondering if that human beings came here, like in Battlestar Galactica, which is another TV series I should talk about, which I might, both the one and two, because I like the story in it. But like I said, that, um, originally Stargate reminded me a lot of that book by C.G. Sheridan. Um. I thought it was very, it's a very intriguing way to move people through space. Um, if, and in No Man's Sky, they have huge portals. I love the portals. And they also remind me a lot of Stargate portals because they have the, you know, the, the symbols that go in it, you know, that Stargate, it was the chevrons, chink, 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 chink. You had to get all the chevrons to go. Um, in No Man's Sky, you have that. And, I'm not sure if there's a connection. You don't have to come up with an idea and there'd be a connection to something else you read or watched. Usually that's how human race is. We all wonder where we come from, you know, uh, as human beings, as the creatures of human beings, where does that come from? And sci-fi does that for me. It, it offers some ideas of what ifs. I'm not saying that we are all aliens who came here, but that would make a whole much, a whole lot more sense. Also in the idea of Stargate, uh, having gods that were aliens make, makes total sense. And, you know, there's a lot of cult religions out there that believe that. They believe that Jesus was an alien and um, who was put here to, you know, to show the way. This is the way. Um, it's the way. Uh, you know, um, Star Wars is an interesting connection in that as well, you know. Um, I love Mass Effect. Mass Effect's another one of those. So, uh, where humans go out into space and then they meet things that are stronger and bigger and badder than them. And it makes you wonder if maybe you were put on Earth because of those things. And I know there are lots of people who believe in Adam and Eve and the Bible and all that. But what if, what if you looked at that, those stories from the eyes of God being an alien? And Adam and Eve being a creation that he made in a lab, or she made in a lab, they made it made in a lab, and then let them, and, and Adam, kind of like Assassin's Creed, kind of suggests that Adam and Eve were in a specialized laboratory garden thing. I mean, the way that you can interpret things and create stories from them is intriguing. Uh, it, we can all do it in so many ways. I remember taking a class um, about writing and every day the teacher would come in and put a prompt on the, on the board and then we'd all write and then we'd all share it. And it was so in 30 students, it was so intriguing that you could get 30 different ways to write a story. Um, and I think Stargate kind of visits that with the, all the worlds that they visit. Each world is a different story of a whole part. So it's pretty cool. I like it. And it's one of my favorite things, which is probably why I like No Man's Sky as well. Cause every time you go through the portal, you end up someplace different. Every time you hyper jump to another 
planet, you end up someplace different. You might see similar things, but there's other things going on. And I'm very intrigued by that. It's probably why I like um, the X-Men as well, because, you know, they had series arcs. They would have story arcs that would explore different avenues of human beings and uh, concepts through space, time, and, you know, just everyday fighting bad guys things. Um, as I get older, you know, I, I want to still create my stories. I want to make them into animations or puppet shows or whatever I want to do with them. That's my goal for the next couple of years, along with my other stuff I'm doing. Um, because I like it. It's, it's fun. It's fun. And that's, that's probably the biggest thing that we all have to do is have fun in our life. I still read every once in a while. I don't read as much as I used to. I used to read a book a day. And then I went to school. <laughs> and then I read, you know, then I went to college. And I had to read other things every day. And so my reading for pleasure kind of, you know. And then I quit collecting comic books. So my reading for pleasure went way down. And then I get into these bouts where I will go and pull out a series. And I'll read the whole series. And um, sometimes then you find out I got books missing. So I have to go out and buy the books. So I have to do the whole series over. Uh, but... Stargate, it's just a, it's not, it's not like it had a profound effect in my life. It was just that it was an, it was an added to the things I already liked. It was a pleasurable point of time to sit. Cause I, when I first started watching it, it was, you had to wait each week for the series to come out. Um, another series of that time period, well, a little earlier was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which I'm sure I'll talk about as well. Because that had a bigger effect in our household than Stargate did. I'm the only one that really watches Stargate in my house as far as I know. I don't think anybody's ever watched it with me. And I don't think it's something I've shared with my kids. Just because they're not as sci-fi-ish as I am. Um, my daughter's very much into drama. And it can be in the Final Fantasy. Let me put it this way. Her favorite book is Princess Bride. Great book, yes and the movie too but she loves the book and the movie uh sailor moon because that's what we watch and buffy the vampire slayer so you can we'll make a quote and there'll be quotes from that uh those three things my son of course is things like gravity falls D D, and um i'm trying to think of what another one's it one pinch man is another favorite of him but those kind of things and he likes really weird video games but i can't think of the ones i mean he likes watch dogs but it's got some Persona, Persona 5 up there, I think, is the one of those that he likes. Um, he does want to play the cyberpunk, so that's probably up his alley. It's computers and stuff like that. And then you got Blue Boy, who is an avid, avid Star Wars fan. Um, more so than comic books. We thought comic books would be it, because we, all of us, including his father, collects comic books. But for him, it's Star Wars. Star Wars is, and Halo. Star Wars and Halo is the thing. And he's only six, so who knows where that goes. Anyway, so um, I will catch you all in the next one, which will be, what does the vixen say? I'm not sure what my, I have in my schedule book for that. Yes, I have a schedule book for my vlogs. I have a schedule book for my vlogs because uh, it helps with the fibromyalgia. Uh, when I get really kind of spacey like I am today and I feel overly frustrated because I'm not getting things done and I'm slow and I haven't been feeling well, I had to drive my daughter to work. So that's that's a big hardship for me. Driving is really hard on my shoulder and my legs and my anxiety and stuff. I get spacey and then I, I don't stick to things. So I have a schedule and the schedule kind of gives, it's a free up schedule. I mean, I could say like last Friday, I just decided I wasn't doing the vlog because I couldn't get around to get it done. and my grandson's time with his, his his dad changed, so everything was all in a... And now I'm going to have to change my schedule again. I think I'm going to have to put animation in for Fridays instead of crafting and put crafting on Sundays so that if I'm gone, I'm not... Because for the last two weeks, I haven't gotten any animation done. So, um, and that kind of makes me feel this weirdness, you know, like I'm not getting nothing done. I'm sorry I'm moving because I'm cold and my shoulders and my back are bothering me and i've been having problems with the fibromyalgia because i'm having problems with my eating i am exercising still so that's good but you know i've been drinking a, a bit too much caffeine I actually try to copy and it's not that's not supposed to be rambling so okay 
I haven't drank coffee in like, let's see, 16 years. <laughs> so I was like, I'm drinking, you know, lattes, tea lattes. I should just try a coffee one. And I'm eating those coffee, chocolate covered chocolate beans. And no, it tastes like coffee. <laughs> all right. So I'm out of here. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Um, let's see. Next week is the 18th. So a week away from Christmas. Yeah, because then Christmas is two weeks from now. Um, and Yule is less than two weeks because the deal is the 21st 22nd anyway uh that's when it starts and then it goes for two weeks um i just don't celebrate the two weeks per se it's like the 12 days of christmas don't really celebrate that either which is the travel of the old wise men yeah okay so that's it i keep going i'm out of here peace